A very good morning and uh, a very uh, warm welcome, Dr. Adarsh Reddy, the director of Sunshine Hospitals. He has done over 600 uh, knee replacement and hip replacement uh, surgeries already in a very short span of uh, time. It's uh, great to have him. I'm doing a VAMcast uh, show after a very long gap. So uh, the first digital uh, VAMcast, so to speak. Uh, so welcome, Adarsh. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much, Vamsi. I think it's a wonderful initiative. I've seen quite a few of your videos and a lot of them are very inspiring. It's great that you're like you know, getting people's stories. That I don't know if I'm worth being here, but still, I'm happy to be the first post-COVID e-Vamsi Vamcast uh, interview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have to keep changing, uh, right? We have to keep yep, adapting. Absolutely. Uh, actually, many people were asking me why I'm not doing any online broadcasts and all. It had to happen with you. So that's yes, how it, sir, I, I'm the pioneer. <laughs> how you ended up doing 600 surgeries in such a short span of time. It's a <laughs> really wonderful achievement, actually. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I won't hesitate to say probably in my age group, I would be doing the most number. But it's definitely because of the platform laid uh, for me by my dad. Uh, he's a very eminent uh, orthopedic surgeon. And uh, so because of the platform I've been given, I definitely, of course, I've utilized it well. I've managed to make a name for myself now. But it's because of that platform that I managed uh, to do so many. Yeah, it's basically because of that, I would say. When did you uh, join uh, Sunshine? When did you officially enter the whole surgeon? Uh... So I, I did my post-graduation in orthopedics from Pune, from Sun Hospital. And I finished it in 2014. And if I remember right, I took a break and I joined Sunshine in 2015. So it's now around five years since I joined. Uh, and since I came into arthroplasty, that is joint replacement surgeries, uh, it's been around three years now, two and a half to three years. Yeah, till then I was doing uh, trauma and other things as well. But now I'm specialized only in joint replacement. You're uh, officially speaking, you're a surgeon. And also you, uh, you were telling me that you're part of uh, the administration as well. So what what? Yeah. Yeah, so I am a surgeon uh, as per my education. I'm an administrator out of, I think, necessity. I really didn't have any training in that whatsoever. I was kind of thrust into it. I mean, neither did dad. Uh, so he just had a dream and he started it and uh, we are there to support him. So, yep, the, I think the whole biggest struggle is actually re balancing the two. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I like here, Urvare Digaru is uh, e exceptionally famous in this uh, segment and uh, the hospital also reached almost everybody knows it on uh, the top of the head he's actually part of the startup clan also if you see the very interesting phase that uh, uh, you are in likewise me as well uh, in the whole transition uh, phase from uh, absolutely yes startup to going into uh, the next generation uh, like yeah. your family so uh, can you share you, you know the tremendous pressures that come with that right <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Share a little bit of uh, how that journey has been for you and, and what you're looking forward to. You're talking about the administrative side or the clinical side? Uh, administration. First. Administrative. Yeah. So um, to tell you the truth, I was a very reluctant administrator because I had no training whatsoever in that. It all started with, you know, I came back and in fact, the first couple of years I was here, I kind of kept a very low profile. I was just doing my surgeries and seeing patients and I was making sure that nobody from the administration even comes near me. In fact, a lot of people, even after a year of me joining, they didn't know that I'm boss's son. They just thought I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons there. For any administration to really work well, you need somebody in the core group. You need somebody from the family. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's necessary, but it definitely it's a big advantage. Uh, so now he can kind of entrust a lot of things to me without like worrying whether it will be done or whether it you know, as a pill for agent, of course, any company does see stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I did notice him becoming overburdened with stuff. Like he sees like more than 100 patients a day. He does like 20 surgeries. And then you have people lining up out his door like for signatures. So he doesn't have time to even, you know, see the dotted line. What's the nitty gritties of what he's signing. So I, I realized that it's about time that I find kind of get into it. Even though I haven't learned, probably learn on the job. Yeah. So luckily I have my brother in law who is also an orthopedic surgeon he's also helping out the administration my mom is there uh, my sister has recently joined as a cardiologist and my wife who herself is a businesswoman she brings a lot of uh, the business acumen to the group so now he is much less burdened because we're all around more uh, family uh, skin in the game asking the question the complexities of that also will be 100 <laughs> percent so i think when we end up working together you end up fighting more right so like uh, in the beginning, we were like always clashing, like uh, why aren't you signing this check and why aren't you doing this? And then dad would ask me, 
then we, we realize the best way to avoid that is divide right you do these you do these you do these you don't come near so my wife takes care of the purchase department practically we don't know anything about how to negotiate and stuff but doctor is a tunnel vision so she's good at it and we let her do that part and i take care of some other part the theaters and stuff like that so we've kind of segregated that has reduced the friction <laughs> identifying what uh, one of the family member is good at and uh, trying to give them response absolutely that that's great so can you talk now about medical experience like how did the passion to become a doctor start in you like uh, when did that happen that's a funny story too actually i think the one thing i knew till i was in the 12th grade i think was that i would never want to be a doctor <laughs> <laughs> seeing how busy my parents were all all my childhood though they always made time for us they were always very busy and uh, i was a bit of a i would say i was a more of a drifter because i would just can take life as it comes you know i was okay at school i was pretty good at school but i never wanted to work too hard and so the one thing i knew i didn't want to be was a doctor probably i i was very much interested in film making and stuff and my uncle is a film director so i was very inspired by him i think around 11th or 12th grade when people were asking me you should kind of decide now it's about time you decide what you want to do i did mention i want to be a director and then my dad is like no way that's <laughs> like a very risky job you can't do that he didn't okay. force me to be a doctor but he was like against me going to film industry he said it's a very risky place so he said you get a degree and then you think about that later and then my baba my dad's younger brother who he came down from the us he kind of brainwashed me into taking by pcs like just consider it and then once i went into by pc it became a black hole by pc went to medicine and medicine went to orthopedics and it basically went down the same path as my dad so i would say probably initially i wasn't like very passionate about it but now i i really love what i do so uh, i've grown to really love it over the last 6 uh, 7 years especially after seeing you know patients whose lives i made a difference in that that gives you a kick so now i, I really love it i think uh, it's a similar story for me as well to be honest yeah. um i think movies is something that uh, everybody is just yeah uh, <laughs> it's like a it's like a seductress <laughs> and uh, i i remember I, i told my father i was very fascinated by the movies of course when i was growing up and and i told him i said that uh, um I, i think i want to get into the movies i want, I want to become an actor or something and then he freaked out like my dad, <laughs> like, that's absolutely ridiculous there's no way of doing that it's, it's almost uh, people who are in a family business environment preset to exactly. do certain things i think the lucky ones really speaking the lucky ones end up loving Uh, eventually loving what absolutely doing. absolutely yeah there are, i guess there are two types i mean three types one is somebody who never loves what he's doing he's going to be miserable the rest of his life one is the extreme lucky who go on to do what they love and i think the third batch like us both of us are the ones who grow to love what we're doing yeah yeah we give it a choice between uh, administration and medical what is the go to thing for you. <laughs> definitely hands down uh, medical I, i think still the administration part uh, though i do it for the sake of the hospital and for dad it's much more comfortable standing and doing my surgeries and seeing my patients i guess if you give me a surgery which takes like 4 hours a really complicated surgery and i do it i'd be less tired than a 15 minute meeting with the administrative group <laughs> it okay. drains you that's good and uh, how do you add uh, value i know doctors keep attending lot of conferences one of the things that uh, is really dreading for me is the amount of uh, studying and reading that doctors have to do it's almost yeah. a life your sister and i are classmates good friends yeah. so we study together and uh, your brother in law as well is a very close friend of mine definitely during our mbbs days we had that whole mindset of man how much we have to read we have to keep on studying and then after mbbs it gets even more difficult with the post graduation and stuff but what i realize now is after you actually start practicing when you start seeing your patients you start seeing that particular disorder or that particular disease you have more of a you enjoy reading about it much more so if i do a surgery a complicated one or if i see a patient whose diagnosis is very uh, vague i'd love to go home and read now it's much more enjoyable to study once you're actually in the field so yeah we have to keep up to date we have to keep on uh, seeing journals every month but we enjoy doing it now we enjoy attending conferences and learning new things from people around the world and attending webinars and uh, so i'm doing a lot more reading now than i was in then and even dad to this day he is now 60 he's been practicing since more than 25 30 years 
he wakes up at 5 and he takes out a book and he starts studying he is studying more than me at this age yeah so yeah. i think that gives you more of a kick once you're in the practice so how's the whole covid situation been for the hospitals and doctors like you frankly speaking we are not actually frontline warriors like uh, the 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 brave uh, doctors in gandhi and all who are actually treating the covid patients yeah. though we have been working over the last one month and uh, one and a half months because we can't Uh, send up a pay a patient who has a fracture and who who needs surgery and stuff but at the same time because we are also part of administration uh, we have uh, been trying to set up the hospital gearing it up for patients who require our help and over the last couple of weeks uh, kushal i and my brother in law uh, dad mom myself we've been like trying to make different avenues and trying to you know uh, spread up the hospital so that who do get diagnosed with covid are like taken care of without infecting the other people so we have been on our toes over the last couple of months we've been trying to educate a lot of people um the good thing is i think i see a lot of people wearing the mask you know maintaining at least a bit of social distancing as we are right now but that has been a big struggle but i see people who have kind of adopted to it now so mm-hmm. bigger part of it is more about education so we had put out a few videos as well trying to educate the people there are a lot of myths which were flying around people were scared so we kind of made a few videos to explain to them what exactly you have to be doing if you're like uh, having any surgeries planned or any emergencies now yeah. um what are the new steps that have come in because of yeah. covid we have to take extra precautions both to uh, protect ourselves as well as the patient so every patient who is getting admitted now we're getting a ct scan of the chest uh, just to rule out you know usually these if any patient is covid positive they do have a lot of changes in the chest so we can tell those in the ct scan so we didn't have to do that uh, earlier but now we're doing that to kind of make sure that the patient is not infected and is not going to infect other people and after admitting during the surgeries we are taking extra layers of the sheets and all that for the surgery and we are wearing extra protective masks uh, it's like a darth vader mask that i'm wearing now <laughs> so it's kind of like on top of the normal mask that we used to wear we have another big kind of a respirator to avoid inhaling anything in case there is a virus there so we're taking they're called pps so we're making so that we don these if there is any emergency or anything nothing to worry uh, in terms of uh, getting anything done oh yeah no we are absolutely open we've been taking all patients of heart patients even uh, pregnant women fractures okay. all emergency even during the lockdown we were taking them and now uh, the, even the regular patients are also they are free to come as long as they follow all the precautions that's great and uh, on on a personal note what is that you do as a family to keep yourselves uh, energetic i know you're a very active person and uh, <laughs> actually i'm a very lazy person uh, but uh, supposed to be active again <laughs> uh, as i said although we do meet each other almost every day in the hospital it's yeah. like fleeting glances uh, i'm running in one direction to the surgery mom's running in one direction to the op dad's running in one direction so we hardly actually get quality time we try to have lunch together but even that is like 5 minutes and i've got to get out of here So uh, and by the time we get home it's quite late and Harsha who's my wife she has her own travel company so it gets late for her as well sometimes so the one time we do get to spend time is in the morning so we around 5:30 to around 6:37 is uh, family time where we play tennis it's uh, mom's favorite thing to do and we have a tennis court right next to our house so we just go and we play tennis together and that's a nice stress buster we laugh we joke and we are playing and we we get some kind of exercise in as well so that one hour is very crucial absolutely i think uh, it's typical family businesses we tend to forget that uh, first we are a family absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> and then we are part of a professional setting so yeah. and, uh, happy to know that you have that going and yeah, we uh, we try <laughs> yeah yeah and and uh, to to a, a, end the questioning session i just want to ask a very basic question i'm sure you get this a lot being in the orthopedic uh, field but uh, how how good is running and uh, to, you know being extra active or doing the elliptical or whatever yeah. your knees right what what is the suge- one yeah. one simple suggestion which people can follow so the, i i like to uh, compare the knee joint to a car okay so the knee joint has something known as a cartilage right which is like a s- smooth layer between the two bones and it's the same as a car if you drive a car a lot the tires are going to wear out the same thing happens with the cartilage with age there is going to be wear and tear and slowly the cartilage will wear away but at the same time you're not going to keep your car in the garage thinking that the tires are going to wear out right you got to move around so definitely being active is very good for you 
there are some specific exercises for the knee joint and which will help to slow down this process of cartilage erosion uh they're quite simple you can just find them on google you can find them on youtube if you do your exercises for your knee very well you should also be able to walk around you should be able to go to the gym do ellipticals they're all very good and there's and some people feel that if you do a lot of activities bones become weak it's actually the opposite uh the bones which require cartilage i mean which sorry the bones which require calcium and uh, which require vitamin d they become stronger with more activity there's a thing known as wolf's law the more strain you put on the bone the stronger it becomes so you have to keep doing activities to keep your bones and your skeleton healthy so so the the, the one of the biggest things i keep hearing is don't walk too much or don't do extra strenuous knee knee strenuous exercise that's a myth it's absolutely uh, uh, I, mean, i wouldn't say it's a myth it depends on what state your knee is already in so if your okay. arthritis already started okay so definitely you're going to have more pain walking like even 10 minutes or 15 minutes so we say don't over strain if your arthritis has not started you can definitely walk as much as you want with good sports shoes okay but yes. if the pain has started in the knee joint just do the exercises for the knee and then you can start walking again i would never say don't walk definitely you should otherwise you get mentally depressed as well you know right <laughs> so, <laughs> so definitely you should walk great adarsh uh, thank you so much for doing this i i hope you had as much fun as uh, absolutely had- amsi definitely yeah i would love to come and uh, have a personal uh, proper interview one day after this thing like dies down <laughs> thank you so much adarsh uh, have a great day have a great thank you so much day.